Hello everybody, this is Gamergar, welcome back to another video of Stardew Valley. For the purposes of today's video, we are going to talk about utilities that every farmer should be using in the game, especially pro farmers. Let's start with the first super important utility in this video, and that is the coffee machine. Now you can get your hands on the lovely coffee machine by completing the special orders quest that you get from Evelyn, and you can only get this special orders quest in spring. Evelyn just wants you to get a dozen of leaks to give to George. Now you can pick up leaks off the ground in spring, but if you're not finding leaks, then you can always just get your hands on some spring seeds, plant those in the ground, and you can have a huge forageable farm like this, which will give you plenty of leaks in the process. And what's great about this is that if you have leaks left over, George actually loves leaks, so it's a great way to build up a relationship with George even after you finish this quest. Once you've assembled your 12 leaks, just put them into the container for Evelyn, get your 2000 gold, and the next day then you're going to get the coffee machine in the mail. Unfortunately, you don't get the recipe to make the coffee machine, you just get one coffee machine, so you can't actually accumulate the coffee machines, but it still gives you one coffee every day, which is really handy. And what's great about this is that you can just get the coffee from it, store it, and you'll have triple shot espressos every three days. Next up, let's talk about the horse flute. So you can get the horse flute from Key's secret walnut room for 50 key gems. The great thing about the horse flute is that you can summon the horse from anywhere in the map. We're on Ginger Island here now at the moment, and we can summon our horse. Let's have a look at the cost there. So it's 50 key gems. Best way to get key gems, well the only way to get key gems, <laughs> is by doing the key quests. Danger in the Deep and Skull Cavern Invasion are, in my opinion, the easiest quests to do if you have access to lots and lots of staircases. One great example of using the horse fluid is that if it gets really late at night and you want to get back to your bed as quickly as possible and you don't want to pass out, you don't want to take that penalty to energy, you don't want to get fined, you know, if a Georgia co-worker or someone finds you, you can just play the horse fluid, jump on the horse, you can get back to bed then, and you'll be in bed before you know it, so you won't get those penalties. As you can see, it's 150, and I just made it into bed thanks to the horse flute. Next up, let's talk about the key to the city, another overpowered item. Using the key to the city, you can access certain NPCs in the game before 9 o'clock. Clint being one, Pierre being another, and this is a huge, this is a great time saver. It means you can access these NPCs before 9, so you can do a lot more in your day. You can even get access to the infamous Marty here, who's never around. But guess what? She's around most mornings. <laughs> Next up, let's talk about great utility items you can purchase from Robin. So we're going to talk about the mini fridge and we are also going to talk about the workbench. These items make it incredibly easy to complete certain perfectionist achievements such as craft all items in the game and make all the recipes in the game. As you can see I've got loads of mini fridges set up here and I've got signposts attached to these mini fridges so each mini fridge will store specific items. One will store crops for example from summer, one will store crops from Spring, while well, one will store crops from fall, one will store fish. If you set it up this way, it's very easy then to get organized and to make the recipes that you need. And you can even put in a lot more mini fridges here if you want, if you want to, you know, have a lot more customization going on in your farm. So you can't go wrong with tons and tons of mini fridges. Next up, let's talk about the workbench. The workbench has to be close. It has to be adjacent to the chests for it to work, but as you can see, I can craft most recipes the game has to offer because the couple of chests that is connected to is filled up to the top with wood, stone, hardwood, all sorts of bars and minerals. Next up, let's talk about heavy tappers that I just made there using the crafting bench. Heavy tappers will work twice as fast as a regular tapper. If you take the tapper per care with a farming, uh, with the foraging profession, can actually make lots of money by selling maple syrup 250 gold per maple syrup and your heavy tapper will give you back one maple syrup every four days so if you set up a huge tree farm hook it up with heavy tappers you can get your hands on tons of maple syrups in no time next up let's talk about the junimo chests these things are so handy now you need two in order for it to fully function but what you do is it basically counts as an additional storage for you you can just walk around with junimo chests Plant one on the ground if you need access to whatever you have inside. Put the main Junimo chest on your farm. I've mine filled up with utility items such as my fishing rod, my pickaxe, my watering can. And for whatever reason, if you need access to any of those items, you can just plop down the Junimo chest and take them out. As you can see here, I just took out my watering can because I wanted to enchant it. A funny note here actually is you can't actually use the watering can at the top of the volcano for some strange reason. <laughs> Maybe it's just too hot. 
compared to the rest of the Volcano Cave. What's also great is that if you need to move the chest, if you don't want to take items out of it, you can just hold down left click and you can kick the chest along the ground. No problem at all. This is really handy if you need to get it out of a way of an NPC, because we all know NPCs are like Terminators in this game. They literally just destroy something if it gets in their way. Another great spot to place a Junimo chest is down here where the tide pools are. This is a great spot for fishing. And as you can see here now, I just pulled out a fishing rod from the Junimo chest and I can fish to my heart's content. When I'm finished, I can just put my fishing rod and my horse foot back into the Junimo chest if I want to keep my inventory clear. And if I want to use those items again, I can just pull out another Junimo chest. So it's a really handy way to get items from wherever you are in the game. Next up, let's talk about the lovely catalogues you can get in this game. Robin has a catalogue here, it's a furniture catalogue. Now, it does cost 200,000 gold, but it will give you, more or less, every aesthetic item in the game. You can also get a lovely catalogue off Pierre, which will give you access to all the, the floors and the wallpapers, so you can customise your house to your heart's content. These catalogues are absolutely amazing for house customization. I love house customization, and I will be showing you a lovely farm tour video very soon, and it's going to have a really cool customization techniques implemented in it. If we take a look at the catalog here, we have all the wallpapers, we've got all the flooring, I'm just going to put a wallpaper up here. And the great thing about wallpapers is that they can change the, the dynamic of how your house looks dramatically, depending on what kind of furniture piece or wallpaper or floor item you put down. So you could spend hours upon hours going through all of the things you can get in these catalogues, placing them in your house to see what kind of a house you can make. Some people that I see on Reddit, you know, make little cafes, for example. You know, some people make clinics. I mean, the, the list goes on. Next up, let's talk about the golden clock. It's 10 million gold. Most players won't actually get this. If you're anything like myself, most of the time when I play through a file, I might play one or two years, and I'll just stop and I'll set up a new file because I get bored. I, I rarely actually make it to the point where I have millions and millions of gold, so, you know, to get the golden clock, but it does prevent debris from popping up on your farm and it makes your fences indestructible. Super handy for an animal farm. Next up, let's talk about the Statue of Illusions. Only 500 gold and you can use this to change your appearance. This is so handy and this is something I never see, you know, in, you know, being talked about online or being talked about in other videos, but you can change the appearance of your character as many times as you want, provided you have the money to do so, and it's always 500 gold to change the appearance of your character. This is so handy, especially if you're tired of the way your character looks and you want to change things around. You can change the, your character's skin, hair, and accessories, and the color of those things using the Statue of Illusions, or the Shrine of Illusions. So I'm going to leave the video there, I hope you enjoyed it. I'll upload the next Sergio Valley video in the next day or two, so stay tuned for that. I've left the intro and outro out of this video, so let me know in the comments if you prefer the videos without the intro and the outro. Have a good one, bye for now.